So one of my favorite things to do with um, uh, myself is to is to go and study um, actors when when I'm either teaching or or in classes. And I'm studying classes and studying stuff. And there's this component of the work that's called emotional preparation. And emotional preparation is key. It is absolutely key. But there are components of emotional preparation. And there is a big difference between meditation and emotional preparation. And it's important to be able to figure out ways, and there are several, where you can merge some of this work in a way that is able to still work that includes, which is key, activating your emotion. See, meditation a lot of times is this thing where people feel that there's this manifestation quality. And a lot of people consider this whole thing with meditation to be this entire thing about having it all be about, med about manifestation. They're thinking that the only thing that meditation is for is to be able to manifest a new car, manifest a new house, whatever, right? And some of those things are important, I'm, sh I'm sure. It's very, it's very important. So the thing is, is that the key that you can work with here is I have seen very nicely people working and diligently hard working where they have worked with emotional preparation. And, and the thing is, is that a lot of times though, they'll feel like they'll go into, they'll figure out something with meditation and they'll understand that there's like this like act, there's this thing that's working in them, there's something that's kind of actively like festering that they're, that they're able to get some of that emotion and the emotion kind of stays in them, right? But there's this whole difference between meditation and there's a difference between emotional preparation. Now, emotional preparation, I would consider in the larger scheme, it's every single thing having to do with activating your emotion, preparing for the emotional ballpark, uh, possibly um, going in very deeply several different times to an emotion, trying to get an emotion. It's, there's a component of crossover when, with meditation and emotional preparation that have to do with relaxation, the ability to relax in the impulses, and there's these, but there's these differences, right? The thing is, is I've seen actors and they've literally been in a situation where they're meditating out, right? Their emotional preparations, or they, they've been able to figure out some sort of activation, and then they meditate that out. They meditate this thing completely out of sight of them, or they try and manifest a reality that they're trying to implement on the actor. Now, this isn't the most fluid thing to do because when when you're trying to, you know, you could, I mean, there's all sorts of ways to work and, and I'm, I'm careful to say that there isn't, but the reality also includes that, see, meditation isn't, you're not trying to predestine what it is that's going on in your acting work. And this is the most difficult thing because actors need to be able to get the activation of their emotion active in them. There are links in that description that you could actually use to improve your acting. You can help to, it can help you to improve your creativity. So there are, are um, independent activities, there are reasons at the door, there's lists of programs, there's um, a list of emotions, there's programs that you can do, and there's also ways that you can actually contact me for private coaching. So listen, please do yourself a favor and check that out, you know, right down there in the description box. And that's the number one priority of emotional preparation. But meditation brings a quality of manifestation and a quality of um, hope, sometimes relaxation, that will, by merging some of those, sometimes it can kind of like help the actor relax so that their emotion's able to be activated, which is, which is true, which is very, very good. But the thing is, 
you then what will happen is a lot of times they'll keep working with this meditation and meditation and meditation and then all of a sudden their activation will come and go and it will just it will it won't be there anymore they'll come and work in their acting and they won't have an active emotion so this is, is an important topic this is a very very important thing because um, it's been heartbreaking sometimes I can say stuff in classes sometimes I can't it depends if I'm teaching obviously I do when I'm teaching when I'm teaching things are very alive and very uh, we're on point to try, or at least I try, I work very hard. And the thing is, is that the key about this whole construct is you want to be able to get this balance, in balance, so that you're not just meditating and, and you are doing the emotional preparation. And the emotional preparation is true, it's finding emotion. And I've got this incredible video on emotional um, meditation on how to describe emotional meditation which is basically the ability to build up and and with relaxation techniques and the ability to really be able to allow that infrastructure of that emotional ballpark to really come and fill you up right so you're filling yourself up with that emotion but the absolute key to emotional preparation is activation so, you're going in a side on a back lot, in a studio lot, on, um, in a film set, in a uh, whatever theater setting, and you're going into your emotional preparation. And you're capable of understanding that there's a difference between emotional meditation and emotional preparation. And then the key thing about this is understanding that there's a big difference between the prep work that you do for emotional preparation, right? Because that's a lot of like, you know, there's a little bit of thinking involved. You know, you want to think and plan stuff out. But the thing is, and then there's the actual emotional preparation, which involves the emotional activation. And that's the actual where the rubber meets the road, which is activating that emotion. It's activating that emotion. So then, there's this construct of, of working and doing this dance within yourself, right? So you got, you're starting to understand the difference between meditation and emotional preparation. And the point of emotional preparation isn't to be able to find a good deep spirituality, which is fantastic to do. It can help your acting in many different ways, but it's a different exercise. So, when you when you work with that you want to do that on a different different kind of situation because you want to be able for your acting to be able to find that activation so then we're at the point now where we're understanding that then there's this song and dance that we have to do with ourselves we've done our emotional preparation we have an active emotional preparation something emotionally is coming up from us it's not just a fleeting feeling it's not just a thought it's not just some kind of uh, um, fleeting instinct. There, there could be instincts with it, there could be feelings with it, but it's a deeper feeling. It's an emotion. And that emotion is starting to come out of us. And now we've got this song and dance to do with ourselves, to be able to balance ourselves, to be able to try and get that element of emotional preparation, of emotional activation, into our imaginary world, right? Into our acting imaginary world, into our imaginary circumstance. So we then have to still work with components of relaxation to be able to get that, that construct of the flood coming up. Now this could be a flood of tears, but the thing is, is we don't want to just sit in the back crying our eyes out because we've got activation, although that might be very healthy to release it, it, the reality is, is we want to be able to put that into our work. So we've got to juggle ourselves in a way that's capable of getting that activated quality into our work. So the first, a lot of acting exercises, the first thing is the knock. So I, I absolutely think that if you're working on acting exercise, you put that emotion completely into that first knock. You absolutely put that in. And then you work so that your first moment is receiving the other person. 
And then this is a great moment because if you're focused on receiving the other person, what's going to happen is that now all of a sudden you've got and you're starting to receive, not only have you received what it is that you've activated, now in real time you've actually stirred up the activation, you have the activation and you're receiving your partner and now what you activated in your emotional preparation and your emotional activation is all of a sudden mixing with what you're receiving with your partner. Now this is ideal. This is ideal. And see how different this is than meditation. See, this is now interaction. See, now we've been able to work with this construct and, and deal with these things, which include these components of relaxation to be able to juggle this thing to get, our, to get this activated emotion into the acting work. But then once we start receiving our partner, then, you know, of course there might be strong times where we might have like quite a strong knock because we've got this, this, this strong feeling. But even when you've got a strong feeling, you want to try and see, to see if you can receive your partner. And if you can do that, then you've got something's going to happen in the exercises and it's going to be real. Something's going to happen in your acting and you can work to develop this technique. So it works for you every single time. That's how like clear cut it can be. And, and this is the thing, you can't really bring meditation into your acting that same way. You can bring, this is the reason why, why things are set up. You can, you can use the, the constructs of some of the relaxation techniques of meditation, but you can't really be able to activate, you know, you're working with some components of it, but the real thing is bringing that activation. The real thing is receiving your partner. The real thing is, is being open enough to be able to have that new fresh experience in the imaginary world, in the imaginary circumstance. There are these programs that I use, and I use these programs to do these things like cartoons, to be able to accentuate, to, to, ex, to absolutely um, amplify the emotions that I go through. And when I go through emotions, first of all, I absolutely emotionally prepare, sometimes even before the videos, because I, I love emotional preparation. I love to be able to get myself upset about one thing, get myself upset about another, and then put that into some imaginary work. And these cartoons, there's links in the descriptions below, and they can absolutely, they can amplify those expressions that you can learn to be able to get with your talent. Okay, so feel free, use those links in your acting world. And then you work with whatever reality that comes out of you. Just work with that and you go what many people will call moment to moment. You go moment to moment, moment to moment. But you've got to get that construct where you've got that first initial moment, which I suggest is the first moment of receiving your partner. You might have a lot to say to your partner. You might have just prepared your guts out and might be in a big breakup. And you might be in a situation where you're about to give back your engagement ring. Or let's say you're about to, um, oh gosh, there could be all kinds of things. You could go and, and be picking, you could be returning a wedding dress for a friend. One that's unused wedding dress. Oh my gosh, that would be something. You know. There's these things, but yet at the same time, you want to be able to work with yourself, work with your activation, work with your relaxation, juggle that emotional activation in a way that's still going to receive your partner. And this is absolutely fun because what you'll be able to do then is you not only be able to experience what you yourself can actually muster or that, or find within yourself, you know, with, with your emotions, you'll actually then be able to experience that and what your partner is giving you and you're receiving, right? You've got to receive your partner for it to really affect you. And then you'll, you'll be there with a, a returning a wedding dress and then maybe the scene is you have to tell your friend, you know, 
listen, she doesn't want to marry you. Or he doesn't want to marry you. You know? And this is a whole thing. Oh my goodness, you know, like, what kind of scene? Wow, it would be a great scene, right? Why doesn't anybody write it? Why don't you contact me? We'll write it in. We'll, we'll work on the project. Listen, this is the way that you get ideas to be able to actually work with. This is the way to be able to do creative work. And this wouldn't have happened if we only worked with the construct of meditation, although it can be very, it's a very important tool. Look that up, the emotional meditation exercise. And, you know, boop the like button if you would, and let me know what it is that I can do for you in your work and what kind of questions you can ask me and, and let's figure this out and work on stuff and, and you know look it would be a great scene absolutely great scene to be able to return a wedding dress of a friend to your sister right your, your best friend doesn't want to marry your sister and they're asking you to return the wedding dress that would be an interesting scene there's a lot of other scenes like that that you could do. Not just best friends, you could mix it up. You know, somebody returning a, a wedding ring when, in, a, in a divorce settlement. Usually the lawyer would give the, 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 the wedding ring, but you could have it so that a friend delivers the wedding ring to get an issue and, and brings the, the separation papers. That would be a great door to do for an activity for an independent activity, for uh, uh, exercise, for uh, acting exercise, you know, for a scene. You know, these are the kinds of things that we work with, and this is the reason why we work with this. We work to be able to mine something that we have to kind of juggle a little bit. And then we start to learn later on that that little juggling that we do with that active emotion is really important. Thing. It's not a game. It's actually it's a, it's fun, but it's it's this thing that you're doing to juggle that emotion just enough to be able to get to the point where you can the key receive your partner, and then when you receive your partner, see how that affects, and then just start 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 go moment to moment, and then see where things go. Okay, listen, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks very much. Okay. Okay, so I teach people how to get upset. I have a lot of fun teaching people how to literally, purposefully upset themselves. Actually waking their own activations up so that they're emotionally activated. There's something that they can get upset about within a ballpark of emotion. But the key, the absolute key, is I don't want you to carry around that stuff in your life. That's what's called acting baggage. You want to be able to learn a technique. I have to be able to tell you that it's, it would be a disservice for me to teach you all of these incredible techniques on how to access yourself as an artist without reminding you very nicely that you don't need your acting baggage in life. So feel free, work on processes where you have a release time after you're doing your acting. And what this will do is it will actually amplify your work because it will give your acting muscles the break that they need in order to get the rest that they need so that your work will be even stronger. Okay, thanks very much.